Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're comparing DKA and HHNS, breaking down the differences so it finally makes sense. Now for my Simple Nursing members, be sure to grab this study guide to follow along. By the end of this, these two conditions will be crystal clear and stuck in your brain ready for test day. All right, let's jump in. So how do you tell the difference between DKA and HHNS? Well, DKA is more common in type 1 diabetes and HHNS for type 2. So think which letter comes first in the alphabet. Well, guys, D comes first, so it's type 1, and H comes second, so that's how you know it's type 2. Now, what is DKA? Well, guys, let the name help you. Diabetic ketoacidosis. There is no insulin produced since it's type 1, guys. We have none. The body killed its own pancreas, and as usual... No insulin means no sugar in the cell. Therefore, the body must burn fat for fuel, resulting in fat waste, and ketone bodies are produced. Kind of like how a diesel engine blows off a lot of exhaust, ketone bodies are very acidic wastes. So we have high acid in DKA, or diabetic ketoacidosis. Now type 2, we have few insulins barely working, so... HHNS or just HHS, let the name help you. So hyperglycemic, we have the higher sugar. Hyperosmolar, we have very thick dehydrated blood. Guys, huge dehydration here. And non-ketonic, we have no ketones and S is for syndrome. Now, since the body has barely enough insulin to put sugar into the cell, well, the body burns sugar for fuel so we don't get those ketone bodies. So guys, think, type 2, you have a few insulins working, so no fat burn, no ketones, since the body's burning glucose. Now, typically, DKA has a faster onset, and consequently, it's easier to fix, since the patients are young with type 1 diabetes. And HHNS is a slower onset with older patients, so guys, it's harder to fix HHNS. Now for the causes, DKA, remember the three S's, like high sugar. So sepsis, like infection, guys, always an NCLEX favorite. The number one cause of DKA is infection. Second S is for stress, like surgeries, or even skipping insulin. Guys, kids in type 1 will get the flu or an infection, and then boom, end up in DKA. Or they'll go to surgery without increasing their insulin dose, and then bam, DKA. And similarly, on the other side, older patients in HHNS, commonly caused by illness and infections. So what are the main differences in the signs and symptoms? Well, for DKA, this is super hard, right? Just remember the acronym DKA. So D for a dried body, guys, and high sugar. 250 to 500 from the lack of insulin. Guys, that's a huge key word. 250 to 500 with type 1 diabetics. Now, K is for ketones and Kuzmal respirations, or known as fruity breath. Key words here for the NCLEX, deep, rapid breathing that smells fruity. This is called Kuzmal respirations, so think ketone respirations. So we say, ketones, do you love me? Are you riding? Mana, 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 moo, moo. The body is in metabolic acidosis, so the body tries to correct itself, or basically compensate, and get rid of all this acid. It does it by panting like a dog to breathe out all that carbon dioxide, which we call carbon diacid. So remember, we'll see Kuzmal respirations as deep, rapid breathing as the body tries to get rid of all this acid. And the memory trick here is carbon diacid. Now next, our A is for abdominal pain, which is a huge NCLEX tip. HHNS does not have abdominal pain, only DKA, typically on the NCLEX. And our last A is for acidosis, metabolic acidosis, guys. Huge NCLEX key number here. Write this down. pH 7.35 or less. Huge number on the NCLEX. It will always show up on SATA questions. Now switching over to type 2, the slower and more serious one since it's harder to fix. So HHNS, guys, remember the triple H's here. We have higher sugar loss with higher fluid loss, so sugar over 600 plus and extreme dehydration. And our third H is for head change. Now the NCLEX term 
is neurological manifestations. Guys, write that down. We'll often see confusion with classic signs of HHNS. Guys, we don't get head change or neurological manifestations with DKA. Our next N is for no abdominal pain, guys. DKA, we have that abdominal pain. As well as no ketones. So this means no acid, no Kuzmol respirations, basically meaning no fruity breath and no deep, rapid breathing. Now that's probably the biggest difference than DKA. And lastly, S is for our slower onset with stable potassium, 3.5 to 5.0. So when you get an NCLEX question stating high sugars with neurological changes or neurostatus changes, guys, with no acid, definitely HHNS. And if you get a question about a diabetic kid with abdominal pain and that pH less than 7.35, guys, it's most definitely DKA. Want more insider tips and tricks for NCLEX style questions? Well, our Simple Nursing membership has exit prep lectures and thousands of questions covering every nursing school and NCLEX topic. So for DKA treatments, simply remember the acronym DKA. D for dehydration. Guys, we treat the dry first. Keyword is 0.9% normal saline. Now, I got a lot of questions on this from our NCLEX review, so please write this down. Your first priority action for both DKA and HHS is fluids. And the correct answer is always normal saline. Now, K is to kill the sugar slowly, guys, to prevent that low sugar. So we do keyword here, hourly blood sugar checks. Write that down. We want a slow sugar drop. Sugar is really way high, kind of like a plane. So guys, we want to land that plane slowly, not too fast, since we don't want to crash our patients here. The main goal here is to prevent that low blood sugar, that hypoglycemia, that 70 or less. So a slow sugar landing is the goal. So basically, as sugar lowers, then the insulin lowers. We just titrate or adjust the insulin drip and lower them together. Typically, any sugar over 250, we give IV insulin. Now, key term here, regular insulin only. So remember, regular insulin is ready to go IV. And we start with the bolus first, basically meaning rapid infusion. Now, caution, tests will try and trick you guys. Only regular insulin is put right in the vein. Not NPH, not Aspart, not Lizpro. No one else here gets the VIP pass. Remember, only regular insulin is right in the vein or ready to go IV. Now, when sugars drop below 200 or when, keyword, write this down, ketones resolve. This means the body is now burning glucose for fuel and not fat anymore. So we switch the patient from IV insulin to sub-Q and then add some dextrose sugar to the IV bag, typically D5W. Now, you're probably asking, why do we add sugar if the sugar's already high? Well, guys, it's kind of like landing that plane. Sugar is our landing gear. We want a smooth and slow landing, preventing that low sugar crash of hypoglycemia. Now, a common test question is always a question about a child in DKA who's too nauseous to eat or maybe vomiting. And the question always says, do you still give him insulin if he doesn't have food? So think about it here, guys. Well, yeah, you still give the kid insulin, guys. His sugar's really, really high. Big NCLEX tip. Still give insulin on those sick days. Lastly, we A, add the potassium. Key word here, write this down. During IV insulin, not after. During. Big NCLEX tip. And yes, even when potassium is normal between 3.5 and 5.0. Now, you're probably asking yourself why. Well, guys, remember... Insulin puts sugar and potassium into the cell. So naturally, both sugar and potassium drop together. So to prevent a potassium crash, we add potassium, sort of like how we add sugar. Now, a little side note about potassium. Think potassium pumps the heart. So the four rules of potassium revolve around protecting the heart with potassium. Number one, our first action is heart monitor placement. And secondly, guys, we never push potassium. This means sudden death. The heart will cramp up and not pump anymore. Third, we only do 10 to 20 mLs max per hour. 
not 30 minutes, not even 45 minutes, guys, per hour, a full 60 minutes or more, usually around four hours. And lastly, we always put potassium on an IV pump, never a solo drip, guys, it's too risky. And as always, slow the infusion pump if the arm starts burning, which is pretty common. Now to help you remember the ECG rhythms with high versus low potassium, our memory trick is very simple here. So just think high potassium, we have high pumps. So we get peak T waves and ST elevations for potassium over 5.0. And the exact opposite for low potassium below 3.5, just think low pumps. So we get flat T waves and ST depression, and even this weird little U wave. What the heck's a U wave? Shut up, U. Now for HHS treatments, guys, remember the acronym HS. We always treat the hydration first. Both DKA and HHS, hydration first. 0.9% normal saline. Huge NCLEX tip, guys. Now, we can always do hypotonic fluids, but that's not as common on the NCLEX. And then S for stabilize the sugar with insulin. Again, caution, guys. Only regular insulin is ready to go IV. Big NCLEX tip right there again. And just like DKA, we correct the sugars slowly with key term hourly blood sugar checks and insulin going from IV bolus to subcutaneous injections. We land that sugar slow. Now, as far as potassium for HHS, out of 10,000 questions we took while making the script, the potassium only came with DKA. So guys, remember, adding potassium for DKA but a lot of questions came up about reassessing the hydration status. So write this down, guys. So we reassess both blood sugar and rehydration status. So for hydration, we'll see stable blood pressure, cap refill three seconds or less, and guys, skin, write this down, should not be pale or cold. It should be warm and have some color. Urine output should be 30 mLs per hour or more with normal specific gravity too high and the body is dry. So the little memory trick here is hemoconcentration is an indication of dehydration, basically meaning high and dry lab values, very heavy urine. And hemodilution is overhydration, low liquidy labs with low liquidy urine. Lastly, don't let the NCLEX trick you. Rehydration status does not include apical pulse, lung sounds, or even pupil assessment. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by nursing school topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.